Hi everybody, podcaster and columnist Joel Curtinitis here, and I have an endorsement in the gubernatorial race. I'm going to be voting for Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds this year in the governor's race. And uh, that might come as a surprise to a lot of folks because people who know me and my background with the conservatarian uh, movement in Iowa know that um, I was not a very big fan of Governor Terry Branstead, and I've not been a fan of a lot of the things that Governor Reynolds has done either. Um, and also that I have been uh, very close to the Libertarian Party of Iowa, that I have been involved with third parties personally and have been supportive of third parties um, getting more successful and people becoming more engaged with those to kind of open up the political process and break out of the two major parties. Uh, that said, there is one issue that we cannot afford to get it wrong on this year, and that is the issue of life. And on the issue of life, uh, despite my, my tremendous respect for my friend Jake Porter, I can't agree with him on this. And uh, it's, it's kind of a, a deal-breaking issue for me uh, when it comes to the governor's race. So um, the, the Libertarian Party, I want, it to, I want them to do well. Uh, I hope that Jake does great. I hope the Libertarian Party um, maintains major party status. I think that's very important for the state of Iowa and for the, the state of the nation going forward, I believe. Um, if the LP was pro-life, I wouldn't be in this situation. I would be happy to support uh, Libertarian candidates who will stand up for the right to life. Um, and I hope that they will continue to move that direction. I hope there's opportunity for more dialogue there because I think it would be very valuable and very beneficial for libertarians to uh, come to the understanding that the non-aggression principle can't really fit with, uh, with abortion. You know, um, when you're talking about uh, inalienable rights, if we really are created and endowed by our creator with inalienable rights, then abortion really is the most brutal violation of those rights that's imaginable. So um, I hope they're able to move on that. But let me give you a little bit of, of uh, big picture on this, okay? So obviously, I am not a huge fan of uh, the GOP. I understand that as a as somebody who's passionate about the pro-life cause, uh, has the GOP sold us out a bunch of times? Yes, absolutely. Um, have they paid a lot of lip service to the issue and then done nothing? Absolutely. Um, Planned Parenthood is spending millions on electing Democrats this year. And where do you think those uh, millions of dollars came from? Well, GOP has, uh, despite holding, you know, prohibitive majorities in the, in the federal legislature, uh, Planned Parenthood is still getting funded by tax money. Your money. And that's the failure of Republicans. So I completely get it. I am completely um, supportive of people who uh, say, you know what, I've had it with the GOP, I'm ready to try something else. And I get it. I get where you're coming from. But on this issue, let me give a little bit, a little bit of context on the narrative uh, here in Iowa and nationally. Now, in passing the heartbeat law, Iowa became kind of the tip of the spear uh, in terms of the pro-life movement. And as long as Iowa continues moving in a pro-life direction and we retain first-in-the-nation status, this is going to be a place where there's increased pressure on candidates to be more pro-life. And what I mean is there's going to be an environment here where people know coming into the state, hey, this is a state where there is broad support for the right to life. Um, people you know, here have an understanding of the science behind it, and they realize that um, that it's important to protect the life of the unborn. They recognize that the unborn are people and that the, they're supposed to be uh, legal protections there in place, and Iowa was the place that sort of launched that into the stratosphere. Now, that's the narrative that, that exists right now as Governor Reynolds has signed the heartbeat bill and as it continues to be defended. Um, Planned Parenthood and the Democratic Party, they understand this completely. They get the importance of it and the significance of it. They've challenged it at every level. Of course, with Kavanaugh now on the Supreme Court, they understand that's not going to be their salvation. If it gets to the Supreme Court, uh, they can't count on a decision in their favor there, as they so often do to uh, negate the legislature's movements in a pro-life direction. Um, but that's why they've made abortion a centerpiece of Fred Hubble's campaign. They've made it part of his campaign, part of his brand, part of his persona. And, of course, he has a history of being very close uh, and, and, and personally supportive of Planned Parenthood itself. And um, there, there's a clear risk there to the Democrats of trying to paint a, a woman, Governor Reynolds, as anti-woman, but they haven't shied away from that so far, and you have to ask yourself why. Well, that's because the upside of Hubble winning this election against Reynolds for their abortion lobby is huge, and they believe it justifies that risk electorally. Let me tell you what I mean. If Hubble wins this race, they're going to paint it as this giant triumph of abortion rights and, you know, uh, paint it as this victory for women coming together and being heard. You're going to hear all these catchphrases of all these people that use these these uh, dishonest euphemisms for abortion about, oh, it's about, you know, health care and all these things. You're going to hear that. It's going to you're going to be buried in it if Hubble wins this race. 
It's going to set the pro-life movement in Iowa back years. It's going to set the pro-life movement nationally back a little bit, despite our positive momentum, uh, because it's, it's the narrative that they are going for here. They understand how important our state is and how important it is that we uh, change directions here for them to be able to pursue this in the future. They're always thinking ahead. They're, they're much better a lot of times than conservatives are at thinking ahead. So all of this is all queued up to go. I mean, these, these headlines are already written. If Hubble wins this race, this is what's going to happen. You mark my words. It's going to be because this, this has become the kind of the defining issue uh, that's going on right now. They understand that this is something that um, pro-lifers are gaining ground on. The heartbeat bill is the best, uh, possibly the best example of that. So um, that's the context that surrounds this election and makes it impossible to really put any other issue before this one in priority. I mean, for me, this is the most important issue in, in terms of priority anyway. But there's a lot of other things that I can see people saying, well, you know, when it comes to the governor's race, there's a lot of things at stake. We need to, you know, uh, look, look at all of them and decide who has the best package. And I, I agree, you should. But there's potentially no other more critical issue on the table right now than the right to life because of exactly this narrative and what it means to the rest of the country and the future of the pro-life movement. Um, of course, the the effect of that narrative coming forward will be the opposite of what we have now, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of the pressure on candidates. If you get a Fred Hubble victory, and he ran on, now it's not just electing somebody who's pro-choice, okay, or pro-abortion, that's one thing, but electing somebody who is personally connected with the industry and centered his campaign around support for killing babies in the womb, um, that changes that changes the pressure on candidates who come to town. So if, if Kim Reynolds signs this piece of legislation, gets hammered by the left for it, as she has for being anti-woman and anti-choice and all this stuff, um, what does that do to the next candidate if she loses? You know, the next gubernatorial candidate, the next uh, state legislative candidate, you will discourage people from running on a bold pro-life platform because they will think that it hurts their chances electorally. And whether that's true or not, that's what's going to look like. That's what it's going to look like if Fred Hubble walks away with this election. And I, for one, can't let that happen. So um, I think with the heartbeat bill kind of putting us on the map in terms of the pro-life movement, we not only have to defend the merit of the law itself, which, of course, has been attacked um, from, from several different sides, but I also think we need to defend the people that signed it and the people that supported it and the people that got it through. Uh, because if you don't, there's no incentive for other people to join you in the future. So Governor Reynolds, to her credit, and despite um, you know disagreements that I have with her on other issues, to her credit, she signed the heartbeat law and she has continued to defend it, even knowing that it placed a big target on her back. Uh, she may not be as vocal a pro-life champion as I would like, um, but at the end of the day, her choice to sign that bill defined her governorship, and she picked up the pen anyway. So while I certainly respect folks who might vote for uh, Jake Porter and the Libertarian Party, if you're passionate about protecting life, I would strongly encourage you to vote for Kim Reynolds on Tuesday um, and make sure that Iowa remains at the forefront of the pro-life movement. Thanks so much.